Hello and welcome to Veterans of the Valley. I'm Tom Turbyville. It was March of 1919 when about a thousand military men met in Paris for what was known as the Paris Caucus. By the end of the meeting, they had a name, the American Legion. It had been the brainchild of about 20 officers serving overseas in the American Expeditionary Force in France. They had been charged with coming up with a way to improve troop morale. One young Lieutenant Colonel Theodore Roosevelt suggested an organization for veterans. Well, today, the American Legion numbers nearly 3 million members in more than 15,000 posts worldwide. One of those posts, the Earl Graham Post 159 that serves the Brazos Valley. Its commander is Charles Opperstini, lifelong resident of Bryan and a veteran who served, among other places, at the old Bryan Air Force Base during the years of the Korean War. Charles Opperstini, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you and a chance to talk about the American Legion. First, I want to talk about your own service. I know that uh, when you entered, you were down at Lackland, you were at Randolph Air Force Base, and eventually right back up to your, here to your hometown and the Bryan Air Force Base. Sort of talk about those early years of your service. Well, uh, it took a couple of weeks of basic at Lackland, mm -hmm. and then, of course, finished up my basic at Randolph. Uh, since Randolph was a mother base of Bryan and furnished the cadre personnel, uh, I was put on orders to, to come to Bryan. Right. And, of course, Bryan Field was pretty much desolate at that time, so we had a lot of rebuilding program to do. Uh, so I spent a lot of time doing carpentry work in the hospital so we could get it back up functioning again. Right. You were a medic. I uh, was a medic. You were a medic. Bryan Air Force Base, you educated me, uh, located out where the Riverside campus is Correct. right now. Bryan Air Force Base was quite active during World War II, but after the war ended, 1944-1945, it sort of shut down, but then got re-going again in the early 50s, just about the time that you arrived there. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. And uh, talk about the base. I think a lot of people who have been here for a little while have heard of Bryan Field, Bryan Air Force Base, but they don't really know exactly what it was used for, a little bit of its history. It was mainly for pilot training. Talk more about that. It was, yes, it was uh, reopened for pilot training. At that time, <clears throat> they started out in T-28s, which was a propeller-driven plane. Uh, it had a tricycle landing gear, and after they apparently learned to land uh, with the tricycle landing gear, then they moved up to the jet, which I think was the T-33, right. I believe. And uh, then they, they uh, this was their final uh, learning phase. And, of course, after that, then they uh, went, were transferred to wherever the Air Force needed them. Exactly. Pilot training, I guess flying jets and so forth, and et cetera. You talked about the T-28. I know you talked one time about a crash out at the, uh, when you were there, out at the uh, Air Force Base that uh, required some uh, assistance, medical assistance, that maybe Bryan Air Force Base was not prepared to give at the time. It was kind of hectic. At that particular time, we weren't quite ready for flight uh, status, and unfortunately, we did have a crash and uh, uh, of a T-28, and uh, we, uh, I was manually having to give uh, uh, traction to a person's head or neck because he had a fractured uh, uh, cervical vertebrae. And uh, pretty hard to do. We didn't have the equipment to do these things. But fortunately, the uh, C-47 came in from uh, San Antonio, and we were able to transfer both uh, the pilot and the student to, to uh, uh, I guess, Lackland mm -hmm. uh, or whatever uh, hospital it had for the military there. You were at Bryan Air Force Base until about 1953, and then you were transferred to Newfoundland. Talk about uh, where you went there and what your job was and what that was like. Again, uh, I, I, I was a medic there, and <clears throat> the, uh, I was at Pepperell Air Force Base, which was the headquarters for what is known at that time as the Northeast Command. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I was going, going to Thule, Greenland, which is above the Arctic Circle. They were opening up a hospital there, but uh, somehow or another, when the guy drew, uh, took out my Air Force identification code, uh, he put me to, at Pepper, which I was very thankful for because this was a, a, a nice sized hospital. We had essentially uh, a physician of every specialty there. Uh, we had an orthopedic surgeon, psychiatrist, uh, ear, nose, and throat man, orthopedic surgeon. Uh, uh, 
a urologist mm -hmm. and, and on down the line an x-ray or, or a, a uh, uh, radiologist right. uh, so we we could take care so people from that command if they had problems at the smaller hospitals they could not take care of they were then back to our hospital which in turn uh, we took care of them and uh, if uh, we were able to get them back to duty again they would go back to their duty station if not they were and transfer it back to the states. So you stayed pretty busy there. We were busy. <laughs> uh, I was uh, uh, enjoyed the, the tour of duty there. It was right. nice and cool. Uh, the hospital, we had a softball team, a, a great softball team, so I enjoyed that. Indeed you did. And it was there, it was during this time that you personally became interested in physical therapy, which became your life's work. Talk about how that all came about. Well, being uh, that the Air Force uh, did, the medics uh, or the corpsmen uh, did uh, the uh, heat treatments and, and exercise and so forth uh, for uh, the patients, uh, of course, I became interested in physical therapy. And uh, my goal was when I got out of the service, I would uh, finish up my uh, college education, uh, which I did at Sam Houston State, and then applied and was accepted at Herman Hospital School of Physical Therapy, and I went there for a year, and uh, I enjoyed working with people. Indeed. Thoroughly enjoyed my, my work as physical therapist. And you actually uh, made a career out of it some 43 years Correct. In, in, in Houston. A part of that time, I think you said a dozen years or so with the VA hospital, is that Correct. right? Is that right? Correct. And uh, what, what was, uh, at that time, you attended A&M for a couple of years, is that Correct. right? Correct. What was the campus like? What was A&M like back then? I know you played baseball for Marty Corot, right, outside uh, well, of uh, Kyle uh, Field. The well, the freshman coach was uh, Mr. Anderson. Yes. And uh, so I played freshman ball, did not play varsity ball. Uh, wasn't quite good enough. Oh. <laughs> uh, but uh, the campus uh, was probably around six, uh, close to 6,000. It was all male, right. so no girls. Uh, uh, the campus now is so big, it's, you know, it's, I get lost on it. Right. Uh, you could go from North Gate over to South Gate on, I guess, Houston Avenue. Uh, you can't do that now. No. <laughs> uh, so the, the campus has really grown. The school is, has really grown and, of course, continues to be a great school. You grew up here in Bryan, over on the west side of Bryan. You're a proud Stephen F. Austin Bronco. So, Correct. Uh, this Correct. has been your home practically your whole life, except for those four decades that you were down in Houston. You weren't home, but you were close enough, right? Well, we came back quite you, frequently. I'll yeah. bet you did. 21 years now, you personally have been a member of the American Legion. We're going to get specific about the American Legion, especially post-159, and mm -hmm. talk about it. We're going to see some photographs later on. But when you think about American Legion, obviously it's a passion of yours. What do you think about it as far as obviously service is one of the first things that comes well, to Well, it's mind. service to, uh, to uh, ser veterans helping veterans. Mm -hmm. And that's our primary goal is to, is to help a veteran who has a problem, uh, to get him either into uh, medical care uh, or into rehabilitation or somehow help him financially if we possibly can or get him involved uh, so he can have a job again but uh, our uh, we want to help the veterans here locally we want to also help our youth uh, we are into a program of Americanism which we we strongly push and of course under the Americanism uh, we have the Boys State Program, uh, which is a good program for kids to learn about government. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, though they can learn about our local state or government. Uh, we we sponsor Boys uh, Scouts. Uh, we also present uh, medals uh, to uh, the high schools uh, and also the junior high schools uh, for for kids who push. Uh, patriotism or, right. or uh, citizenship. We also have a, an, uh, an autorical contest, and this is a nice contest w which we wish that we could get more young kids involved because there is, if they win the state champion or the state uh, mm -hmm. finals, uh, there, there's a scholarship 
there. So they have some money coming. Then from there, they go to national. So they can end up with quite a bit of money. In scholarships. Uh, it, in that? scholarship right. money, yes. Right. So these are programs that we push. And, and of course, uh, we consider ourselves as a family, and the family is the American Legion, the uh, American Legion Auxiliary, as well as the Sons of American Legion. You all also, I know, have a very uh, a good relationship with the Veteran of Foreign Wars post here. Correct. Many of their members are also your members, too. Correct. Explain to folks, as you explained to me, what the difference is in the two organizations, VFW well, and American Legion. The prime, the prime difference is, is the VFW, you have to have served in a foreign combat zone mm -hmm. uh, during a wartime period. Uh, the American Legion, were, we were incorporated by the uh, Congress uh, as a wartime veterans organization, so you, d you could have served here in the States during, like during the Korean War or World War II. Not everybody goes into a combat situation. Right. You have to have support personnel to, to, to support those that are in combat. So the, anyone that was in the service during a, a combat period uh, is eligible for the American Legion. And certainly I would strive to encourage more veterans to belong to the American Legion or belong to a veterans organization. It, it, uh, we only represent maybe not even 10% of the veterans of Brazos Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand we have 10,000 plus veterans in the Brazos Valley, and uh, we need these veterans to, to join so we could, can encourage uh, legislation to help the veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, the, in fact, the American Legion uh, did file suit against the VA on Agent Orange. And at that particular time, you know, the VA denied that Agent Orange had anything to do with health benefits. Right. Well, fortunately, the, uh, the American Legion won the case, and now we realize that those people that were in Vietnam during that time, uh, Agent Orange could have had an effect upon some of their health problems. About 800 members, 880 members 880 of the Eight hundred eighty members is right? roughly what we have, yes. And you talked about uh, that there's probably 10 to 12,000 maybe veterans in the Brazos Valley, and a lot of the reason for that, that there are so many, is because of Texas A&M. So many old ags have come yes. back here. Yes. Right. Correct. Right. Exactly. Um, you talked about Boys State. Uh, talk a little bit more about that. That's just a fascinating organization that, uh, or program that I've heard of, but probably don't know enough about, and you all are one of the sponsors of this. Yes, it, uh, I, I, I was so impressed, mm -hmm. and uh, we, I went down, and these, these kids, you know, it was, it was like two political parties. They divide up, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they were sitting there fighting each other. It, it was fun to watch these kids uh, uh, actually toy with each other as far as their, their politics were concerned. And uh, one of the things that I was so impressed with, we normally invite the kids before they go, and we then invite them after they've been to Boy State. And one kid came back. He said, well, I didn't really want to go. But he said, I went. And he says, not only did I go, but I, I try to run for everything. <laughs> so he got totally involved in, in, in Boy State and, and really enjoyed it. That makes so it that, all worth it, it right it, there. It, it was worth it, yes. We've got some photographs, photographs that I took when I visited out at the American Legion the other day and some old photographs that you uh, supplied also. And we're going to go ahead and go to those uh, photographs right now and let Charles Opperstein talk about them. You can look right over there. Okay. And that is a, a very young Boy Scout, Charles Opperstein. How old were you there? Do you have any idea? About 12? 13, 13, 13, something like that. It looks about that. Got that, uh, got that tie on. Got that hat cocked. You can tell that that man's going to be a... A man of service. A little bit older here. When was this uh, picture taken? This was probably in 1951 or 52. Uh, probably 52 because it looks like I might have been an airman first class, which is yeah. three stripes. You're in top right there. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, this was nomination for, I think, air, uh, a base airman. Uh, so I, I represented the hospital group. Uh, the others represented, uh, you know, other uh, branches of the Air Force there at Bryan Field. That was taken here in, in Bryan at, at the Air Force Base. Correct. 
You talked, you referred a little bit uh, about the American Legion and that it sponsored a baseball team. Before you ever knew you were going to be a member of the American Legion, you played on the sponsored team, right? Correct. And that's your team. What, what, uh, what year would this have been? This was about. probably 1947, I, w I would think. And, uh, and your top row, second from the right? Uh, top row, second from the right. Right next to the coach, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a program that American Legion, we still continue to push. Unfortunately, we, uh, uh, we don't have the leadership now that we've had, uh, we've had people take advantage of our, uh, so mm -hmm. our post does not sponsor a baseball team as of this date. Right. But there are a lot of posts that do, and uh, it's, uh, I guess because uh, we've had some, with coaches, I think, uh, some problems we uh, have chose not to have one here. I remember when I was working up in the Dallas area as a sports writer every summer that's how we filled our sports pages was writing about American Legion high school baseball. Yeah. It was great. Now a lot of people are going to recognize some of these men. This is a, a ceremony where you awarded a 60 year recognition to the American Legion. Talk about who those folks are. Why don't you go from your of course uh, knelt there in the middle who are these people left to right? A lot of recognizable faces. Okay, there. on the left in, in the red, there is Charles Stashney, uh, whose father was uh, a fireman uh, for uh, City of Bryan. Uh, in fact, at that time, he might have been the only paid fireman the City of Bryan had. It was an all-volunteer force at, at that time. Mm -hmm. But Charles has been in the American Legion. His father put him in, uh, I guess, as soon as he went into the service, and he was in the Navy. Uh, the next gentleman uh, with the tie on is uh, Jack Zubik, and uh, he was in the Army and also was in the National Guard here in Bryan. And his father and he uh, had a tailor shop uh, out at College Station that made uh, uh, uniforms for Aggies. Mm -hmm. The next gentleman uh, is Travis Bryan, Jr. Uh, who has been quite an influential person here in the city of Bryan. Uh, I understand he was quite a golfer in his uh, heyday. Still is, I think. And, and then the next person is uh, uh, Raymond Fickey, who is actually from the Curtin area, and he is in farming and ranching. And, uh, and the very next person uh, with the Legion cap on is uh, Perry Shirley, He's a and gentleman that uh, I'm going to try to get on this show because you say he has quite a story. Of he service. has quite a, yes, I, he was invo in, involved in a lot of combat in Italy, and it would be nice if, if you had him on the program. Uh, I think he received a couple of Purple Hearts, and uh, in fact, I think when he was discharged, he might have been discharged with 100% uh, uh, disability. Yes, sir. But that didn't stop him. He went back to work for the City National Bank, I believe. And, uh, and if you're watching, Mr. Shirley, I'll be giving you a call. We want to get you on the show. And uh, the, the, the immediate on the person right. to the right is, is our adjutant, <laughs> Don Simons, who at one time was our department commander uh, here in the state of Texas. He's a very knowledgeable person. Uh, he was involved uh, here at KAMU, I believe, with their sports uh, program for yes, sir. Uh, uh, R.C. Slocum. Right. And of course, he's Neiman, a technical advisor to this show, as a matter of fact, also. And good, a we, very we appreciate good man. Don. Right. Yeah. And of course, Neelan is myself. Right, right. This is the outside of your post. People that are not familiar with it, it's located out off of Highway uh, 21, just uh, west of the bypass at the intersection of Waco there. This is a uh, a shot, I think, of your uh, auxiliary meeting room. Of the right? auxiliary room, correct. Right, and the auxiliary, of course, is for spouses of American Legion members. And uh, what are we looking at there? This is the the commanders and the president. Uh, I've forgotten which is which, uh, but of uh, the uh, one is presidents of the auxiliary, the other is the mm -hmm. commanders of our post. I'm not. I'm, uh, I'm not there. sure. They recognized on Pikes recognized that the, the past okay. uh, president. That's a, a case that's there in the auxiliary room with some artifacts of uh, of the American Legion. Correct. Okay, we'll move on to the next picture. You sell stuff. 
And you also have uh, photographs of some of your uh, legionnaires up there. So what are we looking at there? Well, the, the, up, the top row up there is the past commanders of our, our, of our post uh, all the way back to 1920 or whenever. Uh -huh. uh, the post, uh, I think, started in 1920 or, and dropped out for a year or two, according to Mr. Simons, but then started back up. So, uh, and I want to say that's just a few of the pictures. There, it goes all the way around yeah. uh, around the room. Also, underneath those cases that we saw before, things that you all sell hats, American Legion hats and pins, and correct and whatnot. This is your uh, you're, you're very proud of this uh, trophy case right out in your in your uh, opening lobby. What well, else in there? We're very proud that we've we've had two department commanders from our post, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a division commander. Uh, and a couple of, of uh, district commanders, which is district is the immediate higher up from the post, and then you have division, and then of course you have department. I think Don Simon's picture was in there, and wasn't he a historian? He was like a state historian. He was a national, national historian. National historian. Yes, he That's was a right. national historian. I want to stay on this picture a while because this is Earl Graham. Talk about Earl Graham. Who who was Earl Graham? Well, Earl Graham uh, was an early. Uh, uh, well, he was in World War I, and uh, uh, our post is, is named after him, and he is buried in the Bryan City Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally posts are, are named after someone, and uh, uh, so our forefathers uh, chose to name the post after him. World War I uh, veteran. And his photograph is well uh, prominently displayed as it should be. Okay, we'll move on to the next picture. This, I, I thought this was fascinating. You took me out to the back of your place and uh, you have a patio out there that you have activities with a big barbecue pit there in the back and uh, you use this a lot but you want to invite other organizations or parties, whatever, to come and, and rent this out, right? Sure, we would welcome as you can see that it's a lot of space and everybody's looking for space, so contact the American Legion and you can, uh, you can use this uh, for your own party, for your own function. Or Since we're on the patio, I would like to mention that mm -hmm. on Flag Day, we do have a flag retirement ceremony, so anyone who has a, a, a tattered flag, American flag, that they would like for it to be disposed of properly, uh, can bring it to our post. We have a little box, uh, our little uh, stay in a box that you can put it in right and on flag day we will have a ceremony to properly dispose of of uh, america or retire the american flag and you have it there on your back patio and that's just uh, just a a fascinating yeah. uh, place you talked about veterans helping veterans and that's what you do and you do everything you can to help another veteran with uh, who, who gets in in problems financial problems whether it be rent utilities and you try to the best of your ability to do that but you want people to understand you do not get any government subsidy that's this is correct we uh, ever we last year uh, we gave out around two thousand six hundred dollars mm -hmm. uh, of course that is money that that we have to come up with ourselves uh, and we don't mind helping the veterans that, that need help. Right, right. Uh, that's what we're for. But this is your money. This is money that you get from dues and, and your fundraising activities. Correct. And, and uh, such like this. Um, you also have um, uh, honor guards that at the request of a family with a veteran who, who passes for their funeral service, you will give a 21-gun salute. Uh, talk about that service that you provide because well, I know it's very meaningful to families. We, we, we're very proud of our honor guard and uh, I, I, for uh, some elderly people, we have a lot of World War II veterans in there, so we're talking about someone who's up in age. Mm -hmm. Also our Korean, uh, we have a, 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 a white uh, shirt uniform with a dark pants uh, and we do provide military funerals for for families that would like to have. And so far, since our, in, in our starting up our honor guard again, we have been to over a hundred funerals mm -hmm. where we have provided a 21 gun salute, present the flag to the family member, and also play taps. 
We talked about your close relationship with the VFW earlier, and that really comes to light at two specific days during the year, Veterans Day and Memorial Day. That's when you all get together. Instead of having two separate ceremonies, I guess you uh, alternate having uh, ceremonies on those days with the Correct. VFW? Yes. The days, like this year, we have Memorial Day. Next year, the VFW will have, uh, excuse me, we had Veterans Day mm -hmm. this year at our post. Next year, they'll have Veterans Day at their post, and we'll have Memorial Day at our post, post this coming, coming year. But yes, it's a joint program, and we do work together very closely. And I know uh, the commander of, of the VFW, Rick Olivares, and we're good friends. Indeed. We've had him on the show, as a matter of fact. Yes. Um, organizations like the American Legion, like the VFW, you can even go into an organization like Lions Club, Kiwanis Club, whatever. They're simply not going to survive unless there's new blood there, unless there's new members, young, old. And I know that in just our last minute here, you would like to, to tell folks, folks that are veterans, to please consider joining an organization like American Legion. By all means. And it, I realize that we're, this is a busy time a life for all of us and I, I grant you that uh, you say well I can join but I couldn't come mm -hmm. but to me it's very important that you join I joined and I never did go when I was young I, I was like a lot of young people I was busy working trying to make a, a living for my, my wife and, and my children but to me uh, it's important to belong so we have numbers Congress will listen to numbers and if we can have numbers, as I said, it was nice that we were able to now point out that Agent Orange does, did create health right. problems. Right. And we need to keep the VA hospitals open. So if with numbers, hopefully uh, we, can, we can impress Congress. And American Legion will do that. Charles Opperstini, thank you. We're out of time. Appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. It is imperative that if such service organizations as the American Legion or the VFW or the Lions or Kiwanis Clubs are going to sustain themselves, that new members come under their wings. Involvement is the key. And thanks to men like Charles Opperstini, the American Legion does stand strong in our community. Certainly you've heard of the American Legion and now you know more about them. And that was our purpose here. Thanks to Charles Opperstini for his service and thanks to all veterans. And thanks to our underwriter, First National Bank. I'm Tom Turbeville. Please join us next time on Veterans of the Valley.